In Bioshock, the game starts you off on a plane in 1960. Cigar in the left hand, wallet with a picture of your family in your right. You pick up a present, with a small easter egg for Bioshock veterans written on it. The plane crashes. You wake up in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by the fire and wreckage. The game intentionally leads you toward a lighthouse. Here? Really? You walk inside and find a foreboding statue with a banner that reads, No gods or kings, only man. You have no choice but to keep going. As you descend the steps, you find a small bathysphere. Once the game introduces you to the city of Rapture, you are greeted by the death of a seemingly innocent man. So far, the game has been nothing but dark and eerie, and everything has pretty much tried to kill you. So, what's the first weapon this game gives you? A wrench. Yep, a wrench. This is exactly why Bioshock will always have a much clearer image in my head than either of its sequels. It set the tone right from the beginning. It created such a clear and skin-crawling atmosphere. You only know some of your character's motivations from the opening cutscene, and you hardly know anything about Rapture other than it's already introduced multiple enemies and it's probably not a very friendly place. But it set the tone and created an atmosphere from the very beginning. It didn't waste any time letting you know what it was all about, all without saying a word. No tutorials, a very minimal cutscene, just atmosphere. Just thick, well-designed atmosphere. Why is creating an atmosphere so important? Well, it may not be as important in every game as it is in Bioshock, but stick with me here. Video games are a medium like any other. A good film, a good television series, a good radio drama all have the same basic components at play. They may be executed in various ways given the tools at the disposal of the creator, but the ability to effectively tell a story remains. Maybe some games don't have as much direct narrative as others, but an atmosphere is still there. Games like Tetris and Super Mario are cheery and easy to get into. Other games like Dark Souls aren't exactly cheery nor easy to get into, but it's also not a horror game either. It has a completely different atmosphere, again, without saying too many words. It tells its own story through visuals and feedback to the player. When the splicer kills that man at the beginning of Bioshock, I don't need a dialogue box or character to tell me this isn't where I'm supposed to be. When the game hands me a wrench, I don't need a tutorial to tell me this may not be the most powerful weapon in the game. It's setting up the foundation to create a space where the atmosphere is thick while still providing room for the player to progress as the story progresses alongside them. Another great example of creating an atmosphere without saying too much or giving any tutorials is an indie game by the name of Dusk. It fades up from black, revealing that you are in some small room. You hear an ominous voice say, Kill the intruder. You quickly look around to get your bearings about you, only to discover you are on a hook. Three hooded men straight out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre close the distance quickly. You have two sickles in your hands, and you instinctively move out of their way to engage in combat until they are dead. Within 10 seconds, Dusk has shown me that I'm clearly not wanted here, while simultaneously forcing me into a situation where I have just learned the basic movement and combat mechanics on my own. Absolutely genius. So why is atmosphere so important in video games? Put simply, for the very same reason we enjoy any media around us. To feel something. We watch a horror movie or play horror games to feel frightened. We watch dramas or play story-based adventure games for a grander, maybe more open-ended story. We watch game shows to engage our brains by answering trivia questions, and we play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild to feel a sense of genuine discovery. We interact with all media for similar reasons. Video games, particularly as they have evolved over the last two to three decades, are no different. Some games may have a better written narrative, better game mechanics, and are generally better on paper, but aren't received as well. Why is that? 
Well, the way I see it, it's the same reason most modern pop music is based on the same four blues chords. Rather than something more intricate or jazz-based, for example, it doesn't matter if there are complex chord progressions or key changes or anything like that. If those four blues chords make me feel something, then that's what will resonate and connect with me for a much longer period of time. Same thing with movies. Sure, some movies may have more complex cinematography or scripts, but if a simple love story is what connects with audiences due to its universally understood nature, then that's the one you're going to remember. As previously stated, video games are a medium just like any other. So, it is subject to the same reception and criticism. At the same time, media is inherently subjective. I like metal, you like rap. That guy likes folk. It's the same with video games. I may like horror games, you may prefer story-based RPGs. I'll say Resident Evil 4 is an all-time classic, you'll say Final Fantasy 7 is an all-time classic. Due to the subjectivity of media in general, we're both correct. So, with this in mind, how do we quantify what is good and what is bad if it's all subjective? Well, the same way we would in music. If something is being sung off-key, or changes chords without any setup or context that makes sense, it's generally bad. With video games, if you have horror elements that aren't scary, a narrative that is very disconnected, or mechanics that aren't fun or are boring, then that will be inherently bad. So, how does this all pertain to the atmosphere? Purpose. If it's too dark to the point where I can't see anything, then what's the point? Bioshock uses darkness for the purpose of setting up the scene where the splicer kills the innocent man. That murder in broad daylight would still be somewhat effective, but in the darkness, it's all I can see. By removing the room light, the only things I can see will naturally stand out that much more. The same way that the light is off when you walk into the lighthouse, but then turns on very quickly when you look up at the statue. Walking in to see that statue is one thing. Having a quick, jarring contrast from dark to light startles you right into the spectacular reveal. The darkness was used for a specific purpose. This can be applied to any element of media. Everything must have a reason. If not unique to itself, then an overarching purpose to propel multiple elements forward is also effective. Take Zelda Breath of the Wild, for instance. Each shrine, each divine beast, and each chest doesn't always necessarily have its own individual purpose, but the simple act of having Calamity Ganon always there and always known to the player to be the endgame gives each discovery a sense of authenticity and meaning. Every new heart I get, every new stamina container I get, every new piece of armor I get is all preparing me for that final fight with Ganon and propelling the game forward. It all serves a purpose. So, atmosphere is as important in video games as it is with any medium. While media is subjective, if it has purpose and is set up intelligently, it can still be inherently good and universally appreciated. That doesn't mean it has to be complex though. Just execute it to a high degree and have purpose. Media is just entertainment after all. And if I'm not entertained in some way, shape or form, then what's the point? So, with all of that said, why do I like Bioshock's atmosphere so much? Because it made me feel something. That's why.